Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So Sean Diddy Combs has been hit with seven new lawsuits today. Now these lawsuits each, they, they were filed by anonymous individuals going as John Doe or Jane Doe. One lawsuit was filed by Los Angeles attorney Andrew Van Arsdale and Texas, and Texas attorney Tony Busby. If you guys remember earlier this month, Tony Busby told us that he would be representing at least 120 such victims. So far, out of the 120 victims, he has successfully filed a lawsuit for six of those victims. Now, so they're saying, according to reports, right, they're saying five of the cases were filed on Monday by men and two by woman. In one of the case, a woman claims that Combs lowered her into a bathroom at a 19, 1995 promotional event for Notorious B.I.G. music video. Then Diddy violently assaulted her and told her, you better not tell anyone about this or you will disappear. That's what he, she said, Diddy said to her. Another case was filed by a man who says he was sexually assaulted by Combs in 1998 when he was 16 years old and attended one of the rapper's fame white parties in the Amptons. The man claims that Combs forced him to remove his pants and demanded he allow him to inspect his genitals. After that, he said that Combs ab abruptly then let him go and told him that his people will be in touch. No, there are some, you know, other claims. So we have to be going from one report to the next. Now, according to another suit. I may chuckle, but it's not funny, right? In another suit, a man says that he was working for Echo Clothing back in 2008 and knew Diddy through his work. As Diddy was developing and marketing Sean John, a competing brand, he says he ran into Diddy and Diddy's three bodyguards in the stockroom of Macy's flagship store in New York City in 2008. Right, He claims someone pistol whipped the back of his neck and caused him to fall to his hands and knees. He claims Diddy approached him and said, suck my D, echo, and brutally, orally raped him. Now, in another suit, a man claims he was hired to work security for Diddy's 2006 white party. So how many security did did they assault at this 2006 white party? Because there's another security guard who has another claim as this in another lawsuit. So this is very interesting. Now he's saying, um, where he believes he consumed a drink laced with G GBH and or ecstasy. He says they forced him into a van, overpowered him and assaulted him. You know what, what kind of assault? The man claims did he inserted his private into the man's back door and he sodomized him. He says the alleged incident resulted in, in semen leaking out of his body. Just imagine what's going to go down in court if these lawsuits are just so shocking, you know, from these reports. No, another man suing Diddy claims that he went to a Diddy party in October 2021 where he became disoriented after consuming one drink. He says the room started spinning and the next thing he remembers is being in a bedroom paralyzed. He says at least three men assaulted him through sodomy and other forced acts and claims he distinctly recalls seeing a naked Diddy above him at one point during the alleged assault. A fourth lawsuit is from a man who says, well, we've been through the 16-year-old who was assaulted at a Diddy party in 1998. No, guys, I believe that this 1998 Diddy party, I believe it's going to cause a lot of conflict. And as such, I can see some of these lawsuits getting thrown out. And my reason for saying this is that there are so many lawsuits because the last time it was 13. And then today we have seven new one. So he has 20 lawsuits. It might be 24. I might be miscounting. It might be 24 or 25. But I can, you know, consciously, consciously remember at least eight of these lawsuits 
you know, they're sharing experiences from the 1998 party. No, is it impossible? No, but I believe that there's going to be a time lapse here that is going to question a lot of things. And because the feds, they do have tapes, I believe that the tapes that they have are going to really dismiss some of these claims. Does it mean that these people are wrong? Automatically, we know that whenever there's such situations, there's at least 10% of the people lying, at least 10%. Now, for the others, there are people who were actually drugged. These people know that they were drugged, but these people cannot really give a recollection of what took place. Because remember that most of these drugs that was given to these people, it causes them to lose memory of the incident. So we're going to hear about victims coming forward who is not going to even be able to give, you know, a play-by-play -play of what happened. They're going to tell you that the last thing they remember was drinking, dancing, feeling dizzy, and then something happened. Uh, something familiar with that allegation that that young lady had filed against Charlemagne. She was at the event. She was given something, you know, she remembered being in a room and then she claimed, you know, Charlemagne assaulted her. We're going to hear stories like that. And you may think that the individual is lying, but they're not. It's just that because they were given that particular drug, it's going to be so hard for them to give a step-by-step -step play but I believe that there will be others who will be coming forward with similar experiences that will all, you know, help to shed light on some of these victims who are not able to give a solid story because of what happened to them. No. Okay, let's go to through the fourth one with the 16 year old because there's some additional information here. So this 16 year old claimed that he was invited to a Diddy party, 1998 again, white party in the Amptons, where he says they snapped a, a photo together. He says Diddy took an interest in him and took him to a more private area to chat, where Diddy told him he had the right look for the music industry and he could be, and could be made into a star. With Diddy's help. However, he claims Diddy abruptly told him to drop his pants and expose his penis for ins inspection. This is the one where he claims that Diddy inspected his private parts and then told him that, you know, his people would reach out to him. So this 16 year old alleged victim claims Diddy abruptly told him to drop his pants and expose his penis for inspection, with Diddy saying it was a rite of passage and asking, don't you want to break into the into the business? He says he succumbed and dropped his pants, exposing his penis, and claims Diddy cupped and held onto his genitals, squeezing and feeling them. He's a doctor, though. <laughs> that's what he claims in the lawsuit. And that's the end. Let me see if there's anything. Yeah, that's the end about, you know, four of the seven alleged victims. So, guys, I know that many of these reports says that it is six alleged victims, but it's actually seven. They're only counting the Busby victim, but there is another attorney who had filed a lawsuit today. Some media outlets have caught on that report. Some of them haven't because you know when they get a story everyone is trying to be the first to report on that story so we've gone through some of these um, allegations from these victims and some of these cases will be thrown out because they they're not making sense and I think that there are too many victims with the same story and they have tapes of that 1998 party because there were females who claims that they were assaulted at this party at on 1998 there were also males and i believe that for some of them you can actually see you can actually see if you understand legalities that it's really not making sense and as such don't be surprised when you hear some of these lawsuits getting thrown out because remember there are several attorneys filing lawsuit and many of these attorneys they're not going to sit down and say what did your client say happened at that white party um Back in 1998, if you go back and you look back to um, the first set of lawsuits from the females, mostly they claim the incident took place at this white party. We have another group of people now that claims the incident took place at a white party. And we're going to have more people coming out 
with the 1998. People are going to use that to their advantage to get some money. So the point is, unless these people are in, involved in an orgy, it's not going to be possible. There's only 24 hours in a day. And we know that <laughs> the party will go on for maybe 12 hours, maybe 14, maybe 16. But the 24 hours in a day is not going to help some of these people give them a safe shot at getting a settlement. If you get what I'm saying, we're going to see that it's all a lie. Okay. Not all, but um, some of these people, because some of them honestly do not make any sense. The man is guilty. It's not if, it's not but, it's not maybe. He definitely has things that he has done. They have evidence of tapes. But the point is, you cannot be calling someone guilty. You cannot be calling someone evil. And at the same time, you're you know, creating likeness of their actions because he lied. He corrupted a lot of people. And then you're going to do the same thing just to get money. No, allow the real victims to step forward, tell their story. Even if they don't get a settlement at the end of the day, let those people get the closure that they need. Let them come forward with their story. But that's all I have to say in this video with you guys. So let me know your thoughts while you're at it. Thumbs up, share, stay safe. See you guys later. Bye, guys.